Hey everyone, welcome back to A Week in Geekdom. Geo here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a Korean manhwa named The Kingdom of the Gods. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and yeah, I finally gave this a shot, The Kingdom of the Gods. I had no idea as of 2020 about this book. When it was first solicited, it intrigued me, and I got my hands on this book, and I <laughs> read it as soon as I was able to. And I, just a, a heads up, I am probably going to butcher a lot of names here. I'm going to try and do my best, and... <laughs> Some of you will probably laugh, but that's okay, because we're all friends and family in here, right? So this is a manhwa. The original concept is from In Wan Yon. The story is from Eun Hee Kim, and the art is provided by Kyung Il Yang. I probably butchered all three, but here's the cover for this manhwa, which instantly looks really striking. But what I really liked about this, I, I thought it was just going to be this uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms type story, or, or maybe inspired by things like Samurai over in Japan. I, I don't know what I was getting myself into until I learned that it's actually an action zombie story set in ancient times, which is just freaking fantastic with beautiful, gorgeous artwork. One of the things I loved about this so much is that even though it's a one and done story, the art is pretty freaking fantastic. I mean, um, if, when you have stuff like this, take, take a look at that. It's the ferocity. Oh, and it's a zombie story, so you'll have to excuse the gore, but that's the nature of the story, I guess. But when you have stuff like that, how can you not be entranced and intrigued by what is happening on screen. Basically, you have the character, this kid over here, this kid over here called uh, Yi Moon. He is the prince of this land. He survived an assassination attempt, and, and now these ninja looking dudes are uh, assassins are looking after him uh, to kill him and he is has employed the services of this bandit uh, Jai Ha probably butcher that name as well who from my understanding and, and by reading this book probably was uh, ex military and uh, some tragic events unfolded and he's now living the bandit life uh, wandering aimlessly I guess throughout the country landscape so when these two meet up we quickly learn that something has gone terribly wrong in this land this is a kingdom that has been riddled with uh, strife not only politically but with uh, famine and and you know food shortages all that stuff and there is a disease happening which is called the living death which basically is a zombie outbreak and look at this stuff this is pretty awesome the landscapes the the richness of the art is fabulous the art is swift smooth looking and visceral uh, i mean look at the panel layouts right here and how fluid everything goes from scene to scene it's all it's mostly like one smooth take as you're reading all the action scenes. It's really awesome. And yeah, it's basically one, one giant escort mission in a zombie apocalypse story. You learn about them in chunks and there's not a whole lot of room for character development. The, the tropes are already set. You have the prince who uh, is this young kid and the bandit doesn't really believe when the kid is telling him, no, I am really the prince. So when he does convince him, he's asking for a larger bounty for uh, this escort mission to deliver him to the palace or the kingdom. And as they wander into this town, they find out that People are missing. It's war torn. There, there's. It's very hellish in nature. The landscape. Let's see if I can find the actual panel while I talk to you guys here. Um, and as you can see right there, right over here, it's all really awful looking. There we go. But we find a couple of people offering them 
their house to stay in their house and uh yeah it turns out that um <laughs> they're kind of gross and they're eating human body parts because there's no food anymore so once you die in this world or you come in contact with other other zombies you get turned into one and you spread the disease i guess however the cool thing about this book is that they strike at night which makes it that much more frightening for characters to be out and about uh, in the wilderness or in towns at night so they really got to take refuge and um, try to escape the, the hordes of zombies i love how the landscapes reflect how dreary grim and and brutal this world has become with this uh, death disease but overall just really fun stuff i mean i love zombie stories that's one of my favorite things when it comes to horror i prefer i don't like the psychological stuff i don't like the slashers killers the demonic paranormal stuff i don't like that stuff what i like is the creature horrors zombies vampires werewolves that's my kind of thing when you have a zombie story regardless of the medium whether it's a movie or a comic or whatever it might be there's always that social criticism that is involved with uh the plot and how the debacle of society reflects the nature of the hungry citizens that have turned into ravenous beasts uh, the, the social commentary on politics with the governments and the social structure of a country and all that stuff. But here, having it set in ancient times um, and it being a war-torn state, if you will, really drives home that these people are suffering and, and they need food and sustenance and they're dying of famine and drought and all that stuff. And and to have a zombie apocalypse really does drive that point home that these people are in miserable conditions whereas obviously the the kingdoms and the bureaucracy and, and the, the kings and queens and all that stuff they're they might be better off for all we know but we don't have enough information to get like the full scope of things we get some exposition dialogue later the characters do find uh, some medical records that inform you of one of the origins of the outbreak in the city that the characters want to travel to. Uh, so you do get some information from there. But uh, yeah, it's more of a character piece. It's more about these individuals doing an escort mission, basically. Wonderful art, really slick action. Look at those fantastic drawings right there. Really detailed stuff, in my honest opinion. And the zombies... Let's see, they're fast zombies, which aren't necessarily my favorite. I prefer slow uh, walking ones instead of the runners, but uh, I dig it nonetheless. You know, there's something eerie about society going berserk and turning on one another that appeals to me, I guess. And, and you find some really horrific things, but uh, the survival aspect is always intriguing. Look at that. That, that, is, that is pretty gruesome right there. Jeez, yeah. And there's the there's the sound effect crunch and crack you can just imagine hearing that but um overall just a really cool uh one and done zombie story you're not gonna get a whole lot and by the end there is some really cool commentary on the whole social nature of of people and their and what they're worshiping at and all that stuff which i thought was great but the only fault is that it, it's over once you get going it ends and you're left wanting more you're left asking yourself what's going to happen next and you're not going to have that answer which is normal for zombie stories i don't mind at all that's part of the fun where you have sort of a a vignette if you will of a specific event that happens and these characters trying to survive some don't make it others do all that stuff and you do get enough hints at, at these characters that you wonder and, and maybe care about them, but not nearly enough like I would have wanted to. I wanted to invest myself into these guys, into the uh, Prince Yi Moon and his quest, because he's a young kid, to see him grow up in this hellish landscape. But we don't get that, unfortunately. I would have preferred maybe a limited series instead of a one-shot thing. Hopefully, uh, if this continues doing well in sales maybe we could get something in the future I, I don't know however all that aside 
Let me, uh, oh, this was a really cool panel, by the way. Look at that. That is, that is pretty frightening right there. Love that scene so much. Uh, at the end of the book, you do get a side story from the same creators, Burning Hell. I'm not going to show the last page because it's a spoiler. Here we go. Burning Hell is the last one in this book. And this is a much shorter tale, as you can see right here, compared to uh, The Kingdom. And here is... It doesn't have anything to do with zombies. It's more... Uh, it's supernatural in nature, but it's about this island, this hellish island is in the stretch between uh, the Korean Peninsula and Japan, and it's used sort of like a, a, a giant exiled island where you dump all your criminals, all the insane criminals and all that stuff, and we get this crazy dude right here. We get this crazy dude right here, who is the foulest, meanest mother effer you've ever seen, and he gets thrown in and escapes when they're throwing him into the island and he murders all the government officials from Japan, all that stuff. And he is looking for, to, you know, to kill all the other inmates in the prison island. But it turns out that one of them is the only one that is still alive. And it's this character right here. And the two sort of develop a, a really interesting animosity relation between the two and they're constantly fighting it's a very brutal series because unlike the zombies these guys are alive and well and conscious enough and you don't really root for any of them i didn't really care for the two of them they're horrible people but uh years later they get attacked by some pirates european pirates and there's uh, this man that has some crazy which uh, supernatural demon powers and it, it's it's kind of crazy and chaotic and I wasn't nearly as invested as the first one but Kingdom of the Gods I really did enjoy and this is a nicely built uh, Viz signature sized Manua as you can see right there I love the spine with the black and reddish orange hue just looking fantastic so that's it uh, the kingdom of the gods thank you everybody for tuning in thank you for liking subscribing commenting being a part of a week in geekdom hit the notification bell if you're subscribed to make sure you don't miss a single video when i upload them so that's about it guys if you've read this book let me know what you thought of it down below and if not tell me what are some of your favorite zombie comics manga or manhwa i'm very interested in finding out I've got to go, guys. I will catch all of you on our next review.